start getting excited. But first, pay attention to Daniel. Round of applause, please. Uh, hi, everyone. So yeah, today I'm going to be talking about components. Um, but first, I have a couple of apologies to make. Firstly, I know I'm all that's standing between you and lunch, so please don't hate me for that. Um, secondly, this is probably going to be the most like 90s era PowerPoint presentation you'll see today. Um, I raised my hand as a JavaScript developer. I did not raise my hand as a, as a designer. So nothing is going to be nice about this. And thirdly, I work for PayPal. And if you read Hacker News, you'll know that we're run by the devil. So, uh, <laughs> but, but we do some pretty cool things. Uh, and you know, not, we're not all bad, I promise. Um, so yeah, what did, what did we miss over the last five or so years? Uh, it seems like React has taken over the world. Everything is now about components. Um, this is the new way to build our front-end apps, and actually increasingly commonly um, our kind of back-end rendering too. Um, it seems like components are the kind of de facto way to structure a really scalable um, kind of big app in the modern world of JavaScript. Um, and if, if you don't know what React looks like, it's pretty much just kind of HTML elements. You can create your own elements. You can pass down data. You can pass down functions. And it follows this principle of you pass down data and functions, and you get, and you get actions up. So you can have these nice kind of self-contained components that do everything they need to do, and then pass back control to their parent. You might have a login component that logs the user in and then passes control back up to the parent. And your entire app can be this nice big tree of components that all do their own thing and all kind of talk nicely together. And that's the idea of React. And everyone's using this because it, it's fundamentally a great idea. Um, and this is kind of what the modern web looks like in 2017. Um, yeah, so not everyone likes React. Cool. Whatever, whatever you want. You can use Angular, Ember, Polymer. All of these frameworks will let you do this component style of pattern. Some, some of them require a bit more discipline than React. It's not quite just out of the box, but you can still achieve it. And it's still definitely the direction you should be, should be going if you, if you want to be building a, a really maintainable app. Um, at PayPal, certainly, we do the same thing with, with Angular. We're migrating to React, but we still do components with Angular. So it's definitely possible. Um, but components have certain limitations. Um, they're great. Uh, I really love them, but there are only a certain amount of things you can do with them. Um, and the limitations start to kind of crop up when you want to start sharing these components. So the moment you start going beyond kind of a, a basic kind of UI component, like a, a button or a form or something that you want to share to another site, you start running into to problems like, how, how do I actually get my component running somewhere else? Um, at PayPal, certainly, we want to share our experiences with other sites, but it's not so easy to build components that we can just plug in everywhere. Um, so yeah, cool, we could just use Webpack, bundle it up, throw some JavaScript out there that everyone can use. But then we kind of run into some problems. Like, what if people aren't using React? We love it in Silicon Valley, but it's not used everywhere right yet. Uh, maybe one day it will be. But we can't just throw a React component out there that everyone can use. Uh, if we do do that, even if everyone did use React, we can't do things like collecting sensitive data, like login credentials on someone else's site. Uh, you know, as much as we trust everyone, we don't want to share that data outside of our PayPal domain. So that's a no-go too. And we also can't show sensitive data, um, you know, for, for privacy concerns and security concerns. We want to keep that kind of on our domain, but we want to make it available across domain. So how do how do we do that? In, in kind of the world of React and the world of components. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the 90s again and talk about iframes. Um, this is the original way to share content across sites. Um, you know, people use iframes for sharing YouTube videos, for Facebook comments, for just kind of sharing whatever you want in a little, in a little box on the page um, on someone else's domain. But iframes are obviously not ideal. Um, you tell someone to use your iframe, they're not going to be your best friend. Um, you have to start passing some data down in the URL. You can't really pass anything advanced down. It all has to be strings. Um, or you can start delving into post message, but then you're kind of having to serialize JavaScript, JavaScript JSON objects. And you can't really send functions down or anything like that. So iframes aren't really that flexible. They're not responsive particularly. Uh, and they're very, very uh, kind of old web. Um, so yeah, weren't we supposed to be talking about React? Um, you know, all the stuff you can do in React, you can't do with iframes. You can't pass data down. You can't expect people to use iframes. But let's try and fix that together. Um, so this is where X component comes in. This is the thing we've been working on at PayPal. 
um, to expose our functionality cross domain. Um, so I want to I do all the stuff I can do with React. I want to pass down data into an iframe in a really nice kind of native way. I want to have that iframe be able to call um, callbacks on my parent page without having to worry about setting up listeners and without having to deal with URLs and serializing data and you know, all kinds of complicated, complicated stuff and janky stuff that I had to do before. I want it to be really fast. Iframes are not fast by default, so that's a problem we have to solve. And I want it to feel native. If someone is using React, I want them to be able to use React. I don't want them to have to start calling document create element and insert node and creating iframes and all kinds of you know, old ways. So, um, so we've got to solve a bunch of problems before we can get there. Um, if you've ever used post message, it's a nice API, but it doesn't solve all of our problems. It's this fire and forget way of sending data from one window to another or down into an iframe or up from an iframe. But it doesn't go much further than that. It doesn't handle any error cases. Um, it, there's no built-in way to get a response. Um, and yeah, it's just a kind of very fire and, fire and forget way that's not super reliable if you want to build kind of scalable applications. iframes themselves are not very flexible. Um, there's no good way to handle errors that are cropping up inside an iframe and handle them on the parent page. There's no way to render something kind of in, ad in advance before you know, before the iframe's loaded, so you get this big white box while everything's kind of uh, churning away. And there's no kind of native bindings. There are some React components that deal with iframes, but none of them really go into this kind of depth. And yeah, event listeners is, is another thing. There's, you know, we don't, we don't want to have to be setting up post message listeners for everything we want to get out of that iframe. That should feel a little bit more native. Um, so let's create an X component. This is what X component does. We pass in a URL, we pass in a tag, and it sets up this nice kind of iframe component for me. Um, and now I can just render it. I can pass down some data. I can pass down some text, um, a click function. I can pass whatever data I want down. And it all ends up inside the iframe. Uh, just like I was rendering, rendering a React component, it's data down, actions up. Um, and then you may be wondering, well, where, where's the template for this thing? React components have a render function that actually render a template. In this case, the template is the web app itself. So we're thinking, you know, what are our web apps? Essentially, they're just components. They have some input, and they give some output. So why not wrap them in a component? Um, so the URL uh, that we had a few slides earlier is just going to render this page. Um, it's going to have some UI. It's going to take some props in this global window X props. Um, and it's just going to be able to use that stuff straight away without having to set up listeners for it. It just immediately starts using the text that's passed down. And it can immediately start calling the callbacks like this click function when the button is clicked. So this way, I kind of I turn my entire web page, my entire web app, into a component that has an interface with its parent. Um, and of course, I promised you some React. So here it is. Um, X component will set up native bindings for these components. So now I can, I can drop in a React component directly onto, onto my, uh, into my JSX templates um, that X component will set up for you. It'll render an iframe automatically. It'll pass down your callbacks automatically. And it doesn't really feel like I'm using an iframe anymore. It's a bit, it's a bit of a nicer interface. Even though it's all powered by iframes, it's, it's a bit more native and it's a bit more kind of modern component world. Um, and even on the child page, I can say I want to implement my iframe entirely in React. I just have to pass down the prop from the parent page when I do my first render. So I can have React all the way, but have this iframe in the middle. And if you're wondering what this looks like, I've got this great PowerPoint diagram. Um, this shows our React component, which renders an iframe. And inside the iframe, we have another React component, which actually deals with the UI. Um, and inside that React component, we have whatever UI we want to display. So these, there's these kind of four layers, but end to end, I feel like I'm using React. Um, and of course, could be whatever framework I want. I've just pe picked React because it's really, really good with components. So this is exactly the problem we had at PayPal. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, we, wanna, we don't want to have merchants redirect to us and redirect back. We don't want to take buyers out of their shopping experience. We want to be really kind of up as a component on the merchant page, kind of as in line with the shopping experience as we can. So we figured, great, let's start by turning our two kind of flagship things into components. And we thought, OK, what do we have? We have a button, a PayPal button that everyone's probably seen. And we have a checkout flow. And both of those really are just components. They're not web apps. They're components. There's no reason they shouldn't be living natively in people's pages. 
Um, so the first problem we had was the first iteration of our button was back in like the late 90s. We have all of these images. If you do a Google image search for a PayPal button, you see all these variations. And we were thinking, OK, we want to get rid of all of these horrible old buttons that everyone's created. Let's, let's kill those things and create a nice new iframe button. So we took all of these and we moved them into this one iframe simple PayPal uh, button. And this means that everyone that uses the thing gets the latest UI. Um, they don't get an, an old junky image that doesn't look good on rest of the monitors. It's all SVG and HTML, and it's much, much nicer. Um, so this goes into an iframe. We can do our checkout in a pop-up, which is fundamentally a component too, right? It's living on the page. It's, for security reasons, we can't always use iframes, so we throw, into, throw it into a pop-up instead. And all of the callbacks and everything just work the same way through X component. And this is great for kind of OAuth-esque flows like this. Um, and for certain use cases, let's just throw checkout in an iframe too, and we can have it feeling much more, more native on the page and act as a component living in the merchant's world. Um, so we tell people this. We say, oh, we put our button in an iframe. And they're like, why the hell would you do that? That sounds like a horrible, horrible idea. Um, but the more you think about it, the more it actually lets us optimize this for our buyers. We can run A-B tests now natively on the button. It's not just an image. We can actually test which buttons do better, which ones improve the shopping experience, which, one dri which ones drive conversion. We can recognize our users and say hello to them or show them their balance or say, well, you know, maybe you should continue with the checkout. Here's a good reason to do so. We can localize the button on a per user basis. Um, and we can do all kinds of stuff like that. So we think. That's a nice trade-off. That's a good reason to, for us to try using an iframe. And so far, the conversion benefits have, have showed the same. It's showed a really positive result for us. So technologically speaking, maybe a bit dubious, but it has, it has actually worked. Um, didn't I say iframes are slow? Well, yeah, they're slow. Sure, that's right. Um, you can see here a diagram. We have our initial page loading. We have our script loading. And then there's this huge gap before the iframe even begins to load. Um, we've noticed that browsers totally de-optimize loading iframes. Um, the, no way of getting around it, they're hella slow. Um, so we're talking with um, you know, Mozilla and Chrome to figure out how, how we get this better. But in the meantime, um, we have this thing in the X component called pre-rendering. Pre so we can actually just draw some content directly into the iframe before it loads. The first, the first thing we did with this was to draw just a loading spinner so you could actually see something was loading. Classic kind of first, first uh, jab at it. Um, this, the second approach we realized, well, actually, we can just render the entire button initially in the iframe. And then when the real button is loaded, we can swap it out. So it's really two different buttons that transition from one to the other. But you don't really notice because they look exactly the same. And everything kind of works a lot faster that way. But it enables us to show, once the iframe loads, we can start having more transitions and animations and show more custom data that we wouldn't want to expose to the site where we're just laying the button on. Um, so if the button's in an iframe, how do, we, how do we even render outside of that, right? Like we want to have a button click that opens up a big, uh, bigger iframe or a pop-up. Like I only have this little bit of room to render, so what do, I, what do I even do there? It's not a lot of room to work with. Well, um, we also built this thing called Render2. Um, so I can have an iframe now that renders to a different window. In this case, we have our checkout, which is being rendered to the parent from the button iframe. And X component handles all of this orchestration. And it lets you say, kind of uh, say, OK, I want to throw an iframe on this page. I want it to have these dimensions. I want it to kind of draw outside of my own boundaries. Um, and aside from our use cases at PayPal, we really think this has some kind of nice implications for how we can build cross-domain components on the web You know, for whatever company. Um, having that flexibility to draw outside of the iframe's own boundaries is something that could lead to some really, really interesting cross-domain components, in my view, anyway. Uh, so yeah, we solved the world's iframe, iframe problems. Not, not really. Iframes still suck. Um, but they kind of make you feel a little bit less dirty if you use them this way. Um, with the native React bindings, it doesn't feel like you're using iframes. You can pass down native data and native functions. Um, you can get callbacks directly back without having janky event listeners all over the place. And you can do this pre-rendering to make, to make them much faster or appear much faster than they actually are. Um, so I really encourage you to take a look at this and give it a, give it a try, because it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so these are the repos that we've open sourced. Um, if you're feeling brave, you can look at our PayPal components. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what we've put out there. And I hope it's useful for all of you. Uh, thank you very much.